Hello everyone. So welcome to our uh day two rocket recap. So today I'm gonna uh, basically go over the properties of inverse function and also go over one question with our day two question, uh day two daily practice. Okay, so where's my pens? Okay, so uh let's read the question first. So function fx satisfies that for any x y is in the real number set. So we have uh f x plus y equals to f x times f y. So and we also know about that f one is equals to two, and gx is the inverse function of fx. So what is the value of g eight? All right. So for the inverse function, we should have one properties. Actually, it happens to all the inverse functions because if one function have inverse functions, this two function must be bijection. So which means uh, this function must be bijection, which is one to one and on two. Otherwise, it doesn't have any inverse functions because it must satisfy one condition. For fx, there's only one x point to one y. So in that case, there will be one y point to one x if you're going to find the inverse function of fx. Okay, and we also have another properties for inverse functions, which is f inverse of fx itself to equals to x. So this is the most important properties of inverse functions. So if we know gx, what happened to my, <laughs> right. if we know g, hmm? wait, oh, gx, what happened to my, wait. if we know gx is, uh, inverse function of fx. We should know about that gfx is equals to x. All right, so this is our properties. All right, so first, we just want to figure out, you know, because we want to figure out g8, right? So basically, we want to figure out what? We want to figure out fx equals to 8. 1x so when x equals to what fx equals to eight, we want to figure out this one. If we want to, if we can figure out this one, then we can basically figure out the values because we should know about that. G f x this time is just g eight, so equals to. Actually, this one should equals to x. So we want to figure out what is the value of. X. Okay. So first, uh, we have some properties of our fx itself. So let me change our colors because these are all the properties or all the things we should know before we starting these questions. Okay, so for this one, we know fx plus y equals to fx times f1. And we also know f1 equals to two. So we just want to figure out what is f2 first because f1 equals to two. So for example, what we just assume x is equals to one and y is also equals to one. So f2 is basically equals to, oh, let me write down our functions first. Okay, so we should know about that fx plus y equals to uh, fx times f1. And we also know f1 equals to Two. Okay, so which means what is the value of f2? So the value of f2 is just equals to f1 plus 1. And this one is just equals to f1 times f1. So which is 2 times 2, which is equals to 4. So this is the value of f2. Okay, then what is the value of f3? So three is basically equals to one plus two, right? So one plus two and two plus one in this question didn't make any difference because they're the same. Okay, so this one is basically one plus two. Okay, so based on our these properties, what we have? Yeah, we should have it's equals to f1 times f2. So the value of f1 is two, and the value of f2 is, Four. So the answer will be eight. Okay. 
did we find it? Did we find one x equals to what? F x equals to eight. Yes, basically we should know about know about that. X is basically equals to three. So we have something like this. All right, because uh f three is equals to eight, and g is also a inverse function of f. So what we have, yeah, we have, basically we should have g of f x is basically equals to g. Oh no, it's basically not not equals to this one because we already figured out one thing. We already figured out f three. So f3 is basically 8. And it's just equals to our x in the f3. So equals to 3 itself. OK, so the answer will be 8. Did you get it? OK, I'm going to see you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye.